Crypto Hot Potato is back as we're going to the Luna UST days. That's right, everyone, they want their money. Speaking of money, 12 billion when it comes to XRP and XRP price action at the end. Along with crypto opening doors and bringing in billions to an otherwise ignored market. Due to the graphic nature of this program, listener discretion is advised. Some people have no shame, but happy Tuesday, new viewers and old friends. If you don't know the deal, you're going to learn it. Drop me something hot, something spicy. Maybe I'll share it in the next video. Your comments come first. CQC says, we're coming down to 38 cents. Believe it. I've been packing the bag since 2019 and I'm exhausted. All right. Where do you think this near-term low is going to go for XRP? Do you think we're going to get a big correction? Or do you think we're going to rally from here? VR Fanatic says, XRP just hit 10,000. Just kidding. Bet all them pump and dump XRP channels feel pretty dumb right now. VR Ch uh, Chat Fanatic's talking about all those channels out there that said, yo, when the tourist thing is over, we're pumping massive. D. Scott Loves says, choo-choo. Only thing making that noise is David Schwartz's bong. What kind of bong makes a choo-choo noise? But speaking of shameless ones, oh, here's one right here. Its price could skyrocket from 60 cents to 748 per token. Shut the fuck up. Ah, uh, man. It, it, VR Fanatic, seriously, th there is no shame with these shillers and in influencers. That's why I'm a news channel. I bring the news, whether it's good or bad, happy or sad. You ready to get down? Let's do it. Bitcoin sitting at 59,398. We're all waiting for big CPI data tomorrow. Catch the live stream. ETH is 2671. Seoul next on the ETF front at 147. XRP. We're going to talk about the number 12 billion. It's very significant with XRP, along with 57.1, which is the price. XLM, we know it's under 10 cents, sitting at 9.9. .9. El Salvador seals a $1.6 billion deal to modernize ports and bring Bitcoin City to life. I just want you to think of El Salvador like three, four years ago. Do you think anyone would have been investing in El Salvador this big? Oh, you want to know what's going on? I'm going to tell you. Yieldport Holdings, owned by a Turkish company, invested a whopping $1.6 billion for the renovation and modernization of two such ports, uh, Akshajula and La Union. Sorry if my language is not the best. This undoubtedly is the largest private money ever poured into the history of the country and is expected to trigger further economic growth. So seriously, what would, what would El Salvador have if it didn't have Bitcoin like this, right? I mean, look at the money, look at the development, look at the 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 action, the juice. Happy Tuesday. Love this kind of stuff. The announcement was revealed by social media pre president and Naiba Bukele. He explained that investment more than 1.6 billion would be made by Epor Holdings in upgrading the Pacific port. The terms of the agreement would print well, I'm not worried about that. Let's go to that Twitter announcement. Dude, again. Bitcoin and crypto opening doors for countries that struggle. And how many people were making fun of El Salvador saying, oh, really? You're going to do Bitcoin City? Oh, really? You're going to use Bitcoin as a currency? Now they're getting massive investments in their country, which weren't there before. But let's now turn the clock back a little. Are you ready for some crypto hot potato? And basically, crypto hot potato is this. People want their money. All those bankruptcies and everything like that. Well, we're starting to pay them out, but we're... Also starting to sue for him again? Come on now. Three Arrows Capital sues Terraform Labs over $1.3 billion in Luna Crash. And don't worry, XRP fans, we're going to talk about $12 billion coming up here shortly. 3AC has filed a $1.3 billion lawsuit against Terraform Labs. The petition claims that the company played the business, leading to the 2022 dismissal of UST and Luna. The crash notably contributed the downfall of 3AC, along with the rest of the crypto market. That's what started this whole thing. But 3AC needs to start paying some people out. So the best way to pay people out is to sue Terra and say that, Terra, you're responsible for this. So you have to pay us so that we can then take that money to then pay other people. Dude, you can't make this shit up. 3AC has accused the lab's co-founder, Doquan, of interfering with Terra, USD, and Luna markets. This fraud inflated the prices of these tokens, which led 3AC to make large investments. The action claims that Terraform's action caused these losses. The liquidators argue that the crash also harmed 3AC's other digital assets. Basically, 3AC's on the hook for a shitload of money because they went bankrupt. So now they're going to go after someone else who went bankrupt because they need to get their money to pay other people to pay other people. It's like one big fucking game of hot potato or Ponzi scheme, isn't it? 
Let's get some money to pay our old debts. This is a fucking joke, man. But we're turning back the clock because that's how this all started. Luna UST Doquan, you scumbag, and your algorithmic stablecoin didn't do jack shit. XRP sees 12 billion surge. What's happening? XRP trading volume skyrockets by 12 billion as major price looms. Now I brought up VR Chat Fanatic here because he's like, yo, I bet all them pump and dump channels feel pretty dumb right now talking about people pumping up XRP. But what do you think these articles are about? These articles are brand new. They just came out today talking about 12 billion moving for XRP. Yo, that 12 billion was almost like a week ago when the Taurus announcement was made. What's the volume for XRP right now? 1.2 billion. 10% of that. That's it. Down 14% last 24 hours. Now, I am glad because, yes, as you can see right here, clear as day, we bounced up from that 55 cent mark. So here's the math for you right now. Leading into CPI data, we've got a 55 cent floor with a 58 cent ceiling. CPI comes out at 8.30 a.m. on Wednesday. You don't want to miss it out. That is the 14th. It's either the 14th or 15th. Whatever day it is, I'm going to have a live stream. I just don't have my calendar right in front of me. And now I do have my calendar right in front of me. It is on the 14th. See, I should have trusted myself long, long, long ago. But XRP is basically going to be doing what the rest of crypto is doing. Hoping that CPI data is juicy in order to get the action back. Now, if we swing it on over to the candlesticks, you know the deal with this. We're going to go to the 15-minute mark. You can see all the resistance points right here. 64, 55 on the support, 60 on the even more near-term resistance. Look, we need bigger news to make it move. But the problem is, is you got people out there talking about, oh, 12 billion XRP surge. Dude, that was trading volume like a week ago when Torres gave the decision, but now the volume is way, way down, like next to nothing, because traders are on the sidelines waiting to see what global macroeconomics can do for us. In fact, the entire market is going to be muted until we get CPI data. And here's the deal. CPI data comes in the threes. I expect this market to be red because it puts more pressure on Jerome Powell to take a pause for longer. If we get CPI data in the two sixes, two sevens on lower, two sevens a little high, but if you're more in like that two six and lower, these markets are going to go green, 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 because we might see a 50 basis cut from Jerome Powell. Now, 12 billion in volume? No. 1.2 billion in volume in the last 24 hours? Yes. Are markets on pause? Yes, they are. Are we still playing crypto hot potato where one person wants to take money from one person from one person and they're all bankrupt? Yes, as sure as shit we are. And this is stuff from two years ago. Dude, crypto hot potato alive and well. I bet you that wasn't on your Tuesday bingo card this August. Come on, man. So you're blaming other people for your decisions on why you aped on something when you didn't have all the data you need from a market manipulator who is playing their own stablecoin algorithmic bullshit. Dude, this is a mess. And it all comes down to people wanting their money. Seriously, that's all this is. I started covering all these uh, crypto bankruptcies when they started happening way back when, right? And the reason I covered them is because I knew they would still be rearing their ugly heads here over the next several years, and I was proven right. 3AC has a lot of payments to make out. They owe people a lot of money. And what's the best way to get your money? I'm trying not to sneeze. The best way to get your money is to sue the people that you think is responsible for your bad decisions. That's right, you don't accept the blame for your poor over-leveraging. You want to blame Doquan and the Luna UST crew. What an absolute mess. Crypto hot potato. But crypto is also opening some doors, and we're seeing that from El Salvador, a country that, yeah, is fighting some hard inflation, a country that's been kind of left behind economically, but now is seeing massive investments, massive upgrades, and it all has to do with BTC. Now, XRP sitting on the sidelines just like BTC, waiting for Jerome Powell and CPI data. Like I said, we got a live stream covering that. Check it out because it's always a lot of fun. Chat is lit AF. Now, what am I doing? I don't know yet because it's storming outside, so I might work out or I might work out inside today. Do a little bit of elliptical, maybe some indoor trainer. But let me know what you're doing down below because if I'm doing that indoor trainer, I'm going to need some comments to read. I'll catch you cool cats later, and as always, choo-choo bitches.